I'm Mark Wright. Your Total News coverage tonight. The Serial Killer Task Force is looking for more detectives. Find out why it doesn't want them to come from the state patrol. I'm Mariyama Shima. Spokane SWAT teams raided a suspected meth lab in East Spokane. And don't call them, they'll call you. We'll tell you about a proposed 911 system that warns you of danger. This is Total News coverage for Monday, March 9th. This is KXLY TV, ABC4, Spokane, Coeur d'Alene. Now, from the largest broadcast news team in the Inland Northwest, this is Total News 4 at 6, winner of the Emmy for Best Newscast. Good evening. It is understaffed, its workload is growing, and it needs more help. But instead of using detectives from the State Patrol, Spokane Serial Killer Task Force wants money for more officers. Tonight, authorities defend their strategy. Total News 4's Dave Meany has our report. Right now, all area law enforcement agencies have a hand in the serial killing investigation, but only detectives from the city and county make up the task force. An investigation as sensitive as this one has to be very carefully controlled, has to be very carefully managed. So for now, the understaffed task force won't include experts from the Washington State Patrol. The state only acts in a support role, providing help with its high-tech crime lab. We give a lot of short-term assistance. State Patrol Captain Mike Duby does consider himself an important part of the investigation. I go to the meetings and things like that. I'm not uh, an official investigator or anything like that, but I, I do provide the support and attend the, the meetings. Instead of using state police, the city and county are looking to hire more detectives. This will cost county taxpayers about $300,000 a year. City taxpayers will dish out about $156,000 a year. Bragdon says the state patrol just doesn't have the resources to be a part of the task force. What they, what they have great difficulty providing, as any agency, is full-time people. Oh, I have no doubt that our, our detectives are highly qualified. In fact, we assist a lot of smaller counties with homicides, rapes, uh, all those things. So I, I feel very confident in our people's ability to get the job done. Even if it can get the job done, the State Patrol really isn't waiting to be invited to join the task force. The State Patrol in this region only has four detectives, and they have their own workload and can't give the task force a long-term commitment. So for now, both sides agree a support role is in the best interest of this investigation. Marianne? Oh, thanks, Dave. Police say they have received close to 800 tips on these serial deaths. If those tips increase, they will need even more help down the road. Well, one of the men overseeing the task force is now Spokane's acting chief of police, Roger Bragdon. will lead the department while the city conducts a nationwide search to replace retiring Chief Terry Mangan. Mangan is starting the transition phase to his new job with the FBI. Bragdon was appointed deputy chief last year and says he will apply for the top job. Although Bragdon doesn't have the required four-year degree, he does feel his experience makes him qualified. Bragdon has been with the police force since 1973. Well, Chief Mangan says he might have changed the timing of his retirement if he knew there would be a serial killer investigation. He officially retires in July. But Mangan will spend most of his time getting ready for that new job in the FBI's training division in Quantico, Virginia. He'll also continue to handle some duties here in Spokane. Mangan says he hates to leave in the middle of this investigation, but he doesn't believe that it will suffer. And uh, I, I don't believe that the uh, task force operations will be affected or interrupted by the transition at all. Um, in fact, uh, I think they'll be very strong and good continuity uh, regardless of what happens in the uh, selection process for the new police chief. Despite his new job, Mangan says he and his wife will keep a, a home here in Spokane. Another Kehoe family member is in trouble with federal agents. This time, it's the father of Chevy and Shane Kehoe. 49-year-old Kirby Kehoe was arrested Saturday in Springdale, just north of Spokane. Now he faces possible federal explosives charges. Agents say a tip led them to a storage locker filled with automatic weapons, hand grenade components, and more than 10,000 rounds of ammunition. Kehoe reportedly rented the locker yeah. under an alias. Now agents also seized loaded weapons from Kehoe's truck and nearby ranch. Plus, we are very interested in an individual such as this to determine exactly what is going on. 
with this individual independently and collectively with other individuals. Agents were not allowed to tell us whether Kirby Kehoe is working in connection with his two sons last year. Chevy and Shane Kehoe were arrested after a highly publicized shootout with Ohio State troopers. Now both brothers are doing time on felony counts. SWAT and HAZMAT teams are searching through a suspected meth lab in East Spokane. Police spent most of the day watching a home at East 2306 South Riverton. In just the last couple of hours, they found meth lab chemicals in a stolen car parked next to the house. Some kind of pipe bomb was also found in the basement, but it's believed to be harmless. Yeah, Acting right Police there. Chief Roger Bragdon says patrol officers working overnight led them to the suspected lab. The weeks now, and they noticed some suspicious activity over the past few days, and, and then noticed uh, what appears to be a ventilation pipe coming out of the basement, which is fairly new, and it's, and it's rather strange. It's not a typical dryer vent type of thing. Some of those officers had to be decontaminated. Earlier today, a woman renting the home was arrested for an unrelated misdemeanor. Two others have been questioned. Spokane County law enforcement agencies got a look today at a new emergency warning system. It's called Reverse 911. You don't call it. It calls you to warn you about danger in your neighborhood. Did she feel she's being stalked by somebody? On a typical day, Spokane County's 911 center is a clearinghouse for about 1,300 calls. What is your zip code there, please? 500 are actual 911 calls. Another 800 come from people reporting crime. But imagine if 911 could call you to warn you about, say, a wildfire. It's my shop, my sculptures, everything. Or maybe a flood. Even a police standoff. This is a test. This is only a test message for Spokane. All of this is possible using a new computer software system called Reverse 911. I can give that emergency calling. company that makes it is pitching it to Spokane County. And many like what they see. To locate Stanley on the maps. Well, it's got tremendous potential. It can reach a lot of people in a very short period of time. And if it can save a life or, um, or two. It's certainly worth something like this. Here's how reverse 911 works. Officials block out the area affected by the danger on a map. Then they record a message. And with the push of a button, your phone rings and you get the warning. I don't know whether they're alive or not. Right now, something has to be really big before the public is warned over the emergency broadcast service on TV and radio. Supporters say the beauty of reverse 911 is that even little things can be passed on to people affected. Or whether it's burglary suspects or sex offenders or uh, people who steal uh, checks out of mailboxes. Well, if I had a problem in my neighborhood, I'd sure like to know about it. Now, emergency officials got their first good look at reverse 911 today. No word on whether they will purchase it. The total software package costs about $53,000. It might make some people feel more secure to know what's going on in their neighborhood. Sometimes you feel like you're left out. Yeah, and it's certainly a much more efficient way of notifying people as opposed to the EBS or flyers mm -hmm. or whatever the other methods are. Yeah. Well, coming up on Total News 4.